Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to share with you how to talk about a previous data science project in interviews. Basically, the interviewer asks you to describe an interesting or impactful project you have done in the past. If you have done some data science interviews, you may notice that this kind of question is so common. Almost every company asks you about it. And it can happen in the entire data science interview process from the technical phone screen to the on-site interview. This is a type of question that does not seem to be hard to answer. Many people consider it as non-technical and they don't even prepare for it. But not that many people can provide good answers to this kind of question. Actually, some people fail the interview because of this kind of question without even realizing it. When you talk about a project, it's important to structure your answer to keep your audience engaged. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this video. I will share with you a template or a structure that you could use as a reference when describing your project. I will also explain to you why it's not a good idea to use a star method to describe a project. The only thing I ask you to do is to stay till the end of this video because you will get the whole picture after you finish watching the entire video. Now let's jump right into how you can structure your answer so that you can keep your audience engaged and make sure the interviewer understands the most important things you want to convey in your answer. The first thing is to use one sentence to summarize the goal of the project. Why did you or your company choose to work on the project in the first place? What business problems was it expected to solve? Then you could use another sentence to provide more context, such as when did you do it, with which company, how long was it, and etc. So two sentences in total. Next, the most important part is the impact of a project. What you, your team, or your company have achieved by doing that project. It's crucial to tell the numbers. Let me give you an example. The most interesting data science project I have done last year was a project that aimed at improving the customer retention by delivering a new feature on our app. The new feature was to predict the estimate time of arrival for shipments. It was a six month project and we were able to improve customer retention by 50%. You can tell from the example that it's a very high-level overview, and the audience can get the result of the project immediately. That's how you can trigger their interest and keep them listening to you. Once you finish the overview of the project, you want to ask the interviewer, do you want me to provide more context or dive into the details of the project? And let him or her choose which direction to go so that you can make it like a conversation rather than a report. If the interviewer asks for more context, you can tell more background information, but keep it short because context is just context. It's not the juicy part of the project. If the interviewer wants you to continue describing the project, then my recommendation is to talk about two to three challenges of that project. It does not have to be all technical challenges. It's better to be a mix of technical and non-technical challenges. Technical challenges are self-explanatory, basically all practical problems related to data science. Non-technical challenges include a wide range of problems. It can be project management, coordination with other teams, or leadership. I'm going to give you some pointers for you to think through the challenges you have been facing. For technical ones, was there a problem when defining success metrics? Was it difficult to obtain the data? Was the size of the data large? If so, how do you deal with big data set? Did the data have high quality? How did you process and clean the data? Also, was there any challenge in model training and deployment? For non-technical challenges, if a project involving multiple teams did you get any objection from other teams? How did you get other people to buy into your idea? Was there any risk in delivering the project on time? What have you done to unblock yourself 
your team or other teams. You may wonder why talking about challenges? Why not just describe a project like how it was done? I have two reasons. One reason is that when we talk about challenges, it's not about the challenges themselves. It's more about how you step in and resolve them. When you ask to talk about a previous project, remember that the only thing in the interviewer's mind is, should my company hire this candidate? Will this candidate be able to deliver? They need to get enough signals that you are qualified. And by going through the challenges and the roles you have played in overcoming these challenges, it's a great way to demonstrate that you are a qualified candidate. You are not only able to deliver, but also make a real impact. The other reason is mentioning challenges helps keep the interviewer engaged. When you use the word challenge, you give the interviewer a hint or a signal that you are going to talk about something very interesting. It can keep your audience listening to you. So sharing challenges you have dealt with is more effective than talking about a whole project without emphasis. Even for an impactful project, if you just mention you are part of the project and talk about how it was done by the whole team, they don't know what you have done to drive the impact. Whenever you finish talking about a challenge, I'd suggest interacting with the interviewer, asking him or her, do you want to hear more details about it? Shall I move forward to describing the project? Once you finish talking about all challenges, if there's time left, you could share one interesting finding with the interviewer. Because the previous parts are all about challenges, it can be intense. Now we want to share something interesting with the interviewer. It can be an interesting finding from the data, an interesting observation, an insight from any aspect of the project, or something interesting you have learned along the way. That will give the interviewer a sense that you were not only able to deliver the project, but also you have enjoyed the project by paying attention to something that other people may have ignored. Now you have a good understanding of the structure. It's pretty simple, right? Actually, it's not only easy for you to prepare for an answer, but also easy for the interviewer to understand it. Now I'm going to explain to you why not using the STAR method to further clarify things. For those who are not familiar with the STAR method, it's a popular framework that people use to answer behavioral questions in interviews. S stands for situation. Start with setting the scene and providing the necessary details of your story. T for task. It means to continue with describing what your task or responsibility was in that situation. A for action, to explain what action items you took to address that situation. R for result, share what outcomes your actions achieved. It makes sense to tell a story this way, right? You start with the context, then you talk about what you have done, and finally the results. The main problem with that framework is that it saves the result at the end, and it's possible that you don't get into the result during interviews because time is limited in interviews. There's a funny story I want to share with you. I have a friend who followed the STAR method in one of his interviews to talk about a project. He spent five minutes to describe the S, the situation, because it was a project involving lots of domain knowledge he tried his best to educate the interviewer on the domain knowledge, and when he was about to get into the action items, the interviewer made a hard stop because he wants to move to the next question. So my friend didn't get the chance to talk about the action item or the outcome of that project. I guess the point I try to make here is, we don't know exactly how long it will take to talk about a project. I mean, how long the interviewer wants us to talk about a project. It can range from 2 minutes to 20 minutes, totally depending on the interviewer. If you plan to leave the result or the impact of the project to the end, very likely you don't even get a chance to talk about it. Instead, if you use the framework I have shared with you, you tell the interviewer the outcome first then there's no need to worry about not getting into the result of the project. 
knowing that for this kind of question, the only thing in the interviewer's mind is to get enough signal that whether you are able to deliver or not. It's not a good idea to leave the impact at the end. Another benefit of the framework I shared is its flexibility. If the interviewer is willing to dive into the details, definitely provide the details. If the interviewer is not willing to interact with you or the interviewer wants to move to the next question or to end the interview, using the framework provides an answer that's short and to the point. To recap, I suggest using this goal, impact, challenges, and interesting finding structure to describe a previous data science project. The first thing is to provide a high-level summary of your project, followed by its impact. Then we want to highlight two to three challenges of the project and what role you have played in overcoming those challenges. It's better to be a mix of technical and non-technical challenges. If you run out of time, it's totally fine to stop there. And if there's time left, share one interesting finding of the project with the interviewer. The key here is to always interact with the interviewer. Make it a conversation rather than a report. That's how you can keep the interviewer engaged and make sure they can understand and digest your project in a limited amount of time. With what you have learned in this video, if you put it into practice, you can outperform many candidates in the interview. Let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions I made in this video. I'd be more than happy to help. As always guys, I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to give me a like. It will motivate me to make more videos like this. I will see you in the next video.